Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program and the third part of my three-part Let's Play this week. And uh, I, I've been looking around a little bit and I haven't made much progress. I'm still not in orbit yet, but uh, I did look at the science lab a little bit. And it seems like we're not going to be getting any proper rocketry until this tier, which needs a lot more science. And just in general, a lot of, the, a lot of this uh, basic science stuff here these uh, thermometers and all of that, it, it does provide a lot of science points. And I started looking at my uh, the, the ships I was constructing, and there is actually a science part of this. Uh, here we go, SC9001 Science Junior, and including this on some flights would actually improve the science of things. And here's this mystery goo containment unit, something one uh, engineers came up with, uh, applications for existing technologies, it's sealed container which appears to be filled with strange looking substance. We couldn't reach in or break the canister open, but watching how the goo behaves uh, could be very educational. And we actually have a communi Communotron 16, which allows to us to, what is that, eavesdropping on secret government operations. So I'm gonna build a spaceship which has those things. So let's put down a command pod there. Then let's put down, let's see. Something that will get us relatively far. Actually, let's put down the science stuff first. We'll put down that and we'll put down a mystery goo container unit and the communitron. I guess we can just stick on the side as well. And then for utility, we're going to need a parachute. And let's see. Then from here, we can do a stack decoupler and we're going to put down a hammer there and come on. Connect. There we go. And then we're gonna put another stack decoupler. And then we're gonna put a rocket that's actually gonna get us up into space here. Uh, this big... Come on, click, click. There we go. Okay, so. Uh, we've got uh, quite, a, quite a spaceship here. And let's see, we've got uh, this going first, then we decouple, then we go for the hammer, then we decouple, and we got a parachute. And we should have um, uh, enough science to go on this. So let's rename this craft as the Science C1. There we go. And let's go to the launch pad. All right, now let's see how much science we're actually gonna get from this. Because uh, I don't know how all these science things work. But here we go. Let's uh, go ahead and launch. And can we, how do we interact with these things? Let's see, observe mystery goo. What does that do? Plus seven science if we recover it. Oh, nice. Two, plus 2.1 science if we transmit it. Oh, we're actually going a little off course here. And what else do, did we attach to our spaceship here? We, we attached this, this science, observe materials bay. What's that do? Uh, material study plus 17.5 science if recovered. Wow, okay. Um, inoperable after transmitting. Let's just keep the data first. So we're observing these two bits there. Oh, there's, there's a, actually a... Let's reset the materials bay there. And we'll see what happens when we get up into space. Uh, but first, let's decouple that. Launch the next phase. Now, I want to get into space and observe these materials and see if... A and then actually, I might want to... Uh, send another ship out and observe those materials within our atmosphere. So um, let's reset the goo canister there. So currently they're, they're both uh, just set to doing their own thing. And here we go. Let's decouple that. Let's get up into space. There we go. And uh, now that we're in space, let's observe the materials bay. What does this say? 25 science! Wow, okay. The microgravity has greatly affected the growth of crystalline structures. Loose objects are also flying around the bay in a very messy but fascinating way. Keep that data. And how about this mystery goo? What's that gonna give us? Plus 10 science! The goo seems to have clumped into a sphere. It also appears to have become brittle. Okay, let's keep that data. So that's gonna get us 35 science if we manage to recover this. Okay, good, good. So, um, let's just uh, speed it up, I guess, until we start coming back down. Oh, there we go. Almost crashed there. So here we go. Coming back down. 
Doing a bit of re-entry. Are we gonna explode? I didn't put any heat protectors. We exploded. Yes. Okay. So we're gonna have to, to sort that out. So let me head back to the vehicle assembly. We need something that's gonna protect us from that. So let's uh, put this to the side. And we need to, let's see, it's under aerodynamics, a heat shield. I forgot about that. And, oh, the heat shield has to go before the decoupler. So let's stick that there. Grab the heat shield, put that there, and that should make it, this should make it functional. Okay, so I'm gonna give it one more try and see if we can actually recover the spaceship. Alright, here we are back out into space. Let's observe the materials bay. And that should be 25 science. Let's observe the mystery goo. And that should be another 10 science. And I don't think there's anything we can actually do with the... the... that transmitter there. I don't think we actually need a transmitter. Anyway, we are heading... quite far out into space. Let's uh, warp ahead until we actually fall back down to Earth. We actually achieved really high altitude. 300,000? Okay, so we're coming back down here. And let's try not to die here. We do have a heat shield. Let's hope we don't die. Okay, we got a heat shield. Don't die, don't die. Observing the materials during re-entry might actually provide new information actually, more science. Anyway, here we go. I think we're actually going to survive this. And... Whoa, this re-entry is pretty harsh. We're at 7,000, 6,000, 5,000, 4,000, 3,000, 2,000. We got to launch the parachute here. And the chute was destroyed. Seriously? Ah, I think my trajectory was just a bit off. I'm going to have to try that again. Actually, on this flight, I think I'm just gonna uh, gather data from here. Let's observe the materials bay. And it says the rarefied air has caused something interesting changes to the gel samples. It seems something is happening with the interior structure. Let's keep that data. 22.5 science, that's pretty good. And let's observe the mystery goo samples as well. Uh, plus 9 for this. The goo seems to be getting very cold now. Let's keep that data. Okay, so I just went on a, a, a sort of sideways trajectory just to get into this sort of a, uh, atmospheric area here. So let's uh, just speed it up here until we actually come closer down. And coming in at just this trajectory, we should be able to uh, uh, have enough time to slow down and also... Ooh, there we go. It's rocking away here. Uh, should give us enough time to deploy our parachute. And we'll get significant amounts of science from this as well. Okay, here we go. Six, five, four. Let's slow it down. Three, two. And we have to sort of deploy our parachute at this point here. There we go. And please don't die. Did it, it expand? It did. Okay, here we go. And that should slow our descent. Very nice. So, okay, we should get quite a bit of science from that. I didn't know about these science tools before, but this should definitely hasten our progress into the, the science field there. Okay, and looks like it survived. Let's recover the vessel. Now, how much science did we get from that mission? Should be quite a lot. And here we go. 34 science. Well, we have 34 science. We gained 31.5 science from that. Very nice. Uh, materials, mystery goo, and recovery. Okay, good, good. So, done. That gives us lots of science to work for. Uh, work with, rather. Now, what should we actually go for? We have 34 on us. These all cost 45, so I guess we should just go ahead and get stability for now. Small nose cone. An aerodynamic nose cap. A winglet, a radial decoupler. Okay, let's grab that. So we have 16 science now, and any of these next ones require 45. So we need another uh, 30 science before we actually 
can research any of that. But let's uh, enter this, see if we can actually get more science. So we got uh, that uh, research just now from the sort of re-entry atmosphere. Let's just try launch this and see if we can actually get more science from just uh, gathering data from our atmosphere. All right, here we go. Let me just check the status of the materials bay on here. Oh, we actually get science right here. So if I keep this data here and observe Mystery Goo as well, keep that data, can we recover the vessel just like that and get a bunch of science? Because that would be good. Um, yes, we got 10 science from that. Perfect. And we got all our parts back as well, so no money lost. So let's head back out to... Uh, let's... I don't know how to go to there from here. Let's just go back here. And now let's get some... Uh, some science from our atmosphere. Just gotta launch it up, gather the data. Here we go. Now, let's observe the materials bay. And another 17.5 signs from that. And let's observe the mystery goo. The goo jiggles and wobbles as the craft flies. Let's keep that as well. What did the uh, materials say? The less resilient samples appear to have splattered around the interior, forming new and interesting color combinations. Okay, cool. So, uh, we, we're keeping that data. So we just got to come back down here. Oh, one of those rockets does send you quite far up. But we should start falling back. It was just one rocket. It sends you up this high? Wow, that, that's pretty good. Maybe it's because it's so light. Hmm. Maybe there is a way for us to get into orbit, but I'm not too sure how. Anyway, here we go. Coming back down. And this should give us significant amounts of science as well. All right, here we go. Get ready to slow things down. And there we go. Wait for things to actually get close here. And deploy the parachute at about 2000 meters. Here we go. For a nice and slow landing. Perfect. Okay, so that should give us the science we need. Well, probably not the science we need anyway, but that gives us quite a bit of science. I don't know why that exploded. Um, huh. I guess we can't land with our, our science unit there. Well, let's recover the vessel. That means we don't get the science from that, that little science module. Is that correct? Yeah, we only got seven science from that. Okay. Um, that means to recover that, we gotta land over water. I guess that's, that's something we have to do. We have 33 science now. Let's see, we still don't have science from space, which is gonna be very useful. So let's, uh, let's see, how do, we, how do we get to space again? I guess we get rid of this and then we can just put on one of these. One of these should get us into space, honestly. Um, I think it will anyway. Okay, so. Uh, this should get us into space so we can get enough science to improve our stuff even further. But coming back in, we do need to land in water. So we gotta plan our flight a bit here. Okay, so. Let's see. Which way is water? We are... Let's see, we're on this part. If we fly south, we're pretty much guaranteed to land in water. Okay. So, let's just... South should be... It's hard to tell from here. Basically that way. Let's launch up. And we just have to tilt a little bit that way. Which is just a little bit this way. Just to make sure we do actually land in the water. And looking at it, oh, we're actually heading eastwards, but that's okay. Now, this thing should 
get us to quite significant altitudes. But will it get us into space? I do wonder. Will this get us into space? We'll see how far it gets us. For science, we need to know anyway. There we go. We can decouple. Now, does this get us up to 70,000 meters? I'm not too sure. Because if it does, then we can get some science readings. There we go. Okay. Let's get some science readings. Observe the materials bay. Let's keep that data. Let's observe the mystery goo. Let's keep that data. Now, we just gotta wait for us to come back down here. And we should land in the water. Here we go, coming back down. And that should actually get us enough science to progress into the next phase of rocketry. Now we do have a heat shield, so we should be okay here. We just got to deploy the parachute as late as possible. I think we're slowing down enough here. Okay, here we go. And just that... Just past 2,000 meters. Deploy the parachute. Please execute on time. And here we go. For a nice slow landing in the water, which should protect our little science chamber there. All right, here we go. Less than 100 meters. Please, nothing explode. It'd be nice if we got that science. And here we go. Touchdown in three, two, one. I think we're okay. Wonderful. Let's uh, recover the vessel. And that should give us significant amounts of science. Let's see how much. We got... 36.3 science earned. We now have 70 science. Very nice. And our funds aren't really dropping either. We're just spending little bit, bits of amounts here. Okay, so we got 70 science. What should the next part be? We could go for... Let's see, a fuel tank, fuel engine, general construction, structural fuselage, Rockomax brandy coupler. Hmm. We could go for aviation, and this actually gives a lot of uh, landing gear and aviation stuff. Flight control, wheels, inline cockpit, basic science. So this stuff will actually give more science stuff, I think. Huh. A comms, the thermometer, rechargeable battery pack. I'm looking at this advanced rocketry. The Terrier liquid fuel engine, the Thud liquid fuel engine, and the FLT400 fuel tank. This might actually make liquid fuel viable, possibly. Let me just check this general rocketry here. Uh-huh. The Thumper Solid Fuel Booster. Currently we use the hammer quite a bit. Mass is 3.5. I think liquid fuel might be something interesting to try out. Yeah, let's go ahead and try that. Go for liquid fuel. And this sort of unlocks other things like fuel systems, propulsion systems, and heavy rocketry. Heavy rocketry would be very nice to go for, really. Uh, but there was one... Uh, let's see. Big fuel tanks there. What other things are we actually looking for here? Space exploration, advanced flight control, landing, aerodynamics. Advanced nose cone, less drag due to pointy shape. Oh, there's more nose cones here. Advanced construction, protective rocket nose cone. Fuel systems. Propulsion systems. Oh, there's some really big stuff over here. Heavy rocketry. Okay, so we should have more parts now. Now, we are supposed to be getting something into orbit here. Now, I don't know... Let's see, that actually gets us into orbit already. Let's, uh... 
Let's try to get rid of that, and we just need something... Let's see. We have the... Terrier liquid fuel engine. Oh, it weighs quite... No, actually, not a lot, actually. And we have the thud liquid with liquid fuel engine. Let's see, what's this? How does this work? You actually attach it to the side? That might be useful for up in space. So let's see, if we do that... We might need two of these things, actually. Let's, uh... I'm gonna put two of these for flight later on, once we're up in space. I'm gonna launch those separately, I think. And then I just need to have something that gets us into space. So let's, uh, let's put a decoupler first. A stack decoupler. And one of these things. How do I get this attached? This is this is not <laughs> hooking on properly. Let's uh let's try that again. So I wanna put uh, this the Thumper solid fuel booster. So that should get us into space. Now for crew, I'm not planning for these guys to come back. Let's uh get rid of Jebediah. John Bus Kerman, you're going up into space. Now, how is this gonna work? I want to launch these separately. So I'm gonna add I'm gonna move that there. I'm gonna move that there. And it will have a parachute just in case, anyway. And I did find out where to check the tonnage. It's over down here. The engineer's report. It's currently 10.5 tons. Okay, so this should get us into space. And we got two sort of side boosters here. Which, I'm not sure if they need fuel tanks, but uh, we'll find out soon enough. Um, let's just... Let's see. This, is, this should be the ore... T1. Okay, good. Now I'm gonna launch this. Now, let's get up into space. So first things first, we're gonna launch this, and this should actually get us into space. Oh, there's no... Uh... Yeah, right, there's no SAS on this because we don't actually have a pilot. Now, this is a little difficult to control as I have to sort of stabilize this manually. But let's see if we can actually get out into space here. I'm not sure if uh, we're too heavy, but we'll just try our best. Okay, here we go. First phase is sort of running out here. We can decouple that. So we're a little loose here. Gotta try and stabilize. We're currently facing the ground. If we check the map, what's our apoapsis on this? Oh, we are definitely heavier than before. We might need more rockets. Okay. But just to test, how does this actually... Let me just try and stabilize this. Whoa, this is, <laughs> this is spinning out of control. Let's... Why is this so hard to control? Okay, here we go. Okay, these liquid fuel engines do not work without fuel tanks. Okay, that's fine. Let's revert flight to vehicle assembly. Now, I definitely want to get something into orbit, but it's not going to be with these. I'm going to have to find something else. All right, here's something we can try, the radial decouplers. So they're just sort of uh, attached to the side and they should be able to work. Let's try launch this. Uh, oh, it's, it's that heavy? Really? Why is it so heavy? It's just got like five of these things. I put more than this. Okay, what's weighing it down so much? If I take that off. Really, they weigh that much? Let's, uh, let's just, I just want to try out these radial decouplers here, so let's, uh, just try... ...get this going first. Let's, uh, I want to... ...put these down here. 
Okay, I'm gonna reorganize these things. So there we go. Uh, there's that. Then we got to put the radial decoupler, which is this one. Let's put those down there. And these will go up here. There we go. So we're launching the, the hammers, decouple, the fleas, decouple. Then I got a last hammer, decouple that, and a parachute. Okay. I just want to see if I can, if this configuration actually give, gives us more distance in terms of getting up there. So let's see, because it's a much more compact design. So let's see how far this gets us. All right, I'm going to head out into space and see uh, if we can actually get anywhere close to an orbit. Okay, definitely not. <laughs> We're getting nowhere close to things. Okay, I'm gonna have to revert back to the vehicle assembly. It seems like this, this method is not gonna work too well. Uh, I'm gonna have to find another way to get up there. All right, here we go with another configuration. We've got uh, three hammers that will launch us up and then we'll decouple them. Then we got a single hammer, decouple, and then a flea. So let's see if this will get us anywhere close to orbit. Let's just head on up here. So it's got a quite nice thrust having three hammers going at the start here. And these sort of uh, radial decouplers make the whole sh the shape of the spaceship uh, look a bit nicer. What is that actually? The Science 1 debris. Oh, we've got st still got some debris out there. Anyway, let's decouple that. Oh, okay. That's uh oh no, we're losing control. <laughs> okay, we're going to have to try this again, but uh uh, uh I think we're doing kind of okay there. Let's revert back to launch. I'm going to give it a proper try and see if we can actually get uh, close to orbit. If not, I'm going to head back to the hangar and see how we do on something else. Because this is uh, rather tricky actually, getting up uh, into orbit. The weight limitation really is the, the thing that does it. All right, here we go trying out one more design here and this is a fuel tank with a liquid fuel booster in the center so it's weighs slightly less so we can actually get four hammers here and we're launching two at a time these two first and then those two and we'll see how far this actually gets us here we go launching up into space just two first and the weight is exactly 18 tons here so i'm it's pretty much as much propulsion as i can get per weight Hopefully it's going to be okay. These radial decouplers should be okay. Um, all right, here goes the first round. Decouple those. Launch the second round. And this just has to get us a high enough apoapsis, which uh, should be okay. Which, uh, actually, we can start leaning over at this point, I think. Just a little bit, so we actually start getting a bit of a... A trajectory going here in terms of where our orbit is gonna go and we can decouple that and those hit each other and exploded okay that's uh, that's one thing now our apoapsis is gonna be not quite what we want but I want to see how good this liquid fuel booster does actually let's uh, speed our, our way along up to the top of our arc here okay here we go and just about here, we can start uh, doing things. Okay, so we're he currently heading inland, I think. So, which means we are, yeah, we are actually heading that way. And we're gonna need a little bit of altitude. Let's try stabilize our target here. I think we're supposed to be heading for that thing there. Okay, now let's see how Actually, no, I'm pretty sure we're moving this way. Now I'm pretty... let's see. Okay, let's see how long this liquid fuel thing lasts. So liquid fuel... I don't know, it might last quite a nice amount here. We are actually changing our trajectory a little bit here. The apoapsis is... Uh, well, it is expanding. Liquid fuel seems to be... Uh, it, it doesn't it last much longer, but it uh, it uh, doesn't have it as much kick. But this liquid fuel, can we actually? 
Well, we can actually control. Oh, damn it. I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> I just realized that the solid fuel, you can't stop the thrust, but liquid fuel, you can. That's why we need liquid fuel. Right. Okay. Okay. I know what we're doing. Okay. Let me just go redo that. I'm not sure if we actually can make it. We probably can actually. Okay. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and redo that. And uh, now that I know liquid fuel, you can control the throttle and solid fuel, you cannot. Okay, that last format wasn't working, so I decided to go for something a bit simpler here. Uh, one big long solid rocket uh, fuel here, and then I have my liquid fuel booster up there. So let's see if this can actually get us high enough, because the last one, it uh, we started getting into a bit of an orbit, but we didn't actually have enough altitude. We didn't get far enough away from Earth. Anyway, this configuration only weighs about 11 tons, so this should get us relatively far. Now, this solid fuel is pretty powerful. Let's Let's hope it actually gets us to the, the apoapsis that we need. Now let's see if it actually does get us high enough here. We just need to get... Uh, one, once this phase is over we'll, we'll find out if uh, we have the altitude. Here we go, solid fuel almost running out here. And it certainly does get us quite high. We're at 15,000 meters here already. Let's decouple that. Now, what's our apoapsis going to be? Uh, it's still a little bit short. Uh, we do need a bit more thrust here. Perhaps if I actually just start firing this now and actually... Will that actually increase my apoapsis? It does. And perhaps... Okay, I'm going to give it a shot and see if we can actually get this going. We, oh, we are actually reaching space here. So if we tilt over to the side, we might be able to uh, nudge this into an orbit. Let's see how far it goes. Oh, look at that. We're almost achieving orbit here. Almost. Just a... <coughs> ah, excuse me. Just a little more. And there we go. We're achieving orbit. Yes. Let's cut our thrusters. Do we have any fuel left? We just have a little bit of fuel left. But uh, look at that. We've achieved orbit. <laughs> oh. Um, well, that's pretty good. Did, does it actually say under contracts? Does it... Uh, Say we, we've managed to orbit, achieve goal, um, fly a vessel up uh, and out of the atmosphere and accelerate parallel with the surface until you are in a stable orbit to achieve this goal. Is this not a stable orbit? I'm not sure. The periapsis is below 70,000, but the apoapsis is definitely good. Our ship is here. Now, uh, how do we... Our ship is here. Let's... Uh, Go down here. Now let's face away from the planet. We have a bit more fuel. We could boost our periapsis just a little bit. Here we go. Face directly away from the planet. And we're gonna just boost as much of our fuel left out this way. There we go. That's all of our fuel. Our periapsis is now, well, it's a little less actually. I'm not sure why that happened. Jeez. I, I thought I was gonna... Oh well, never mind. Does this not count as an orbit? I'm not too sure. If I uh, speed it round one time... Actually, there's one thing we can do out here. We can decouple this. There we go. Leave that out. Well, that's gonna crash back down to, to, to Ker, uh, Ker, Kermin there. But this should be a stable orbit, right? I don't think this is going to crash. If we speed this around... It, it does actually go around without crashing back down to Earth, I'm pretty sure. That is a little close for comfort there. That periapsis being 48,000 meters. Is that slowly dropping? I think it is actually. It might slowly be dropping. I'm not too sure. But I'm going to leave this guy up here. Anyway, we did actually transmit a... Uh, we we did actually put a transmitter here. Let's uh, get a crew report. No signs from being up here. That's fine. Uh, so nothing's going on. Okay. Well, uh, I think that this pretty much counts as an orbit. I'm going to count this as an orbit. Let's... Uh, uh, yeah, look, it, it, it actually does change here. Debris, probes, rovers, land stations. We do have a ship out in space.
All right, I know some of you won't count that as a proper orbit, so I did play it again and I got another Kerbal up there into a completely stable orbit. And you can see under the, the mission quest up there, it, it does actually count as a stable orbit. So there we go. We did actually manage to get something that we built from scratch up into orbit. So we learned to do a, quite a bit of science in this episode, but I think I'm going to end this here. I, I think we've, we managed to get quite a, a, a nice uh, way out into space here. Anyway, this uh, I'm going to end this video here. This is the end of the third part of my three-part Let's Play and end of the three-part Let's Play in general of Kerbal Space Program. I think I did generally well, relatively well here. We did quite a bit of science uh, towards the end and actually got uh, s s a pretty nice liquid fuel thruster thing there, which uh, helps us get out into space. Anyway, uh, thanks so much for watching, hope you all enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video.